Hey everybody, good morning, Coach here. How are you doing? Man, I'm glad to have the crew with me this week. This week we are discussing utility sheds in the landscape. The design, the purpose, and the organization of each. Also, what you really can do with a small shed when it comes to organizing other parts of your home. Hey, are you with me? Glad you're here, let's get started. Hey, I'm Matt, you can call me Coach. Every Friday I bring with me landscape DIY education, concepts and theories, ideas and solutions, so you guys can go out and tackle a landscape project yourself, get professional results, save a whole lot of money in the process, and in this day and age, be a lot more self-reliant. Man, after a 20 plus year career in the green industry, I'm bringing with me a lot of knowledge and experience that I wanna share with you guys the new, modern, educated, self-reliant homeowner of today. So, for any of you out there, might this sound just a little familiar? Maybe with some variables added in, but honey, you know, we have got to do something with the garage. I can't even get the car in there anymore. Can you please, please organize the garage or get rid of some of the stuff out there? I need to get the car inside. Any of that sound familiar? You know, if your garage happens to look like, you know, this here or this one here, maybe it's time that you exercise some options and maybe look into some extra storage on your property. I am a huge, huge fan of the portable or permanently placed type of sheds. Either the aluminum ones like this or the wooden ones, you know, like we've seen at the box stores and we've seen tough shed ads and those kinds of things. You know, a simple 10 by 12 shed is enough to really alleviate a lot of floor clutter and give you a lot more space in that garage or maybe that uh, third bedroom or whatever. Sheds are a very utilitarian way of controlling storage space, controlling clutter, and organized correctly, you can get stuff from the garage and stuff from the, the yard, and you can organize it to where it really, really, really is a great functional tool back there. Then, if you want, you can turn around and landscape around it and really get it to meld creatively right into your existing landscape. It's a great way to add function and value to anybody's property. Hey, I can remember my first house many, many, many years ago, 1983 to be exact, and I did not have a shed. I was, I was a youngster and I didn't have a lot of tools yet or anything else. So would a shed have worked for me then? Probably not. But by the time I moved around a few times and got out to the Central Valley of Northern California, I had acquired quite a few things. And that was where my first shed, you know, ended up on the property, the house that we bought. Um, I outgrew it really fast. And I had yard, yard equipment, uh, uh, hand tools, power tools, things like that. And then a couple little seasonal items. It wasn't very big, I think it was, six by eight or something like that, maybe eight by eight. So I outgrew that thing really, really fast. But when I finally made it to Weed Patch Ranch, you know, I had a whole business. I had a couple of trailers with landscape stuff in it and I needed more space. You know, a typical 10 by 12 shed just was not gonna cut it. So the property that Maestro and I bought, we had a shop in the back, one of the large aluminum metal buildings. And that was perfect. It was not only perfect for today, but it was gonna be perfect for the amount of time we were gonna be there. And it was great for the business, it was great for the personal, and I was able to build out um, workbenches. I had three total, and the whole back wall the previous owner had shelved up uh, out of wood and plywood, wonderful array of storage spaces. And we basically organized it where I had the business stuff on one side, we had personal stuff on the other, we had seasonal and sporting goods stuff, and it was fantastic. We had to keep it clean, we had to keep the spiders out of it, but for the most part, it was our forever type of storage system. And the garage that was out front next to the house hey, it was just the garage. It's where the car and the truck went in all the time. And the only thing I had left in there was a couple of car care products and some towels. I think there may have been the tailgate to the truck. But 
Anyway, there was plenty of space and you didn't have to, you know, move in and out of the garage or have a garage that looked like one of these right here. You know, there's just no sense in that. A person will always feel better about themselves if they have their environment and their surroundings somewhat under control. They, they really will. It's a psychological phenomenon. And if you have a nice, organized, clean space where you put your vehicles, where you put yourself every day and every night, and your stuff is organized in a fashion that might be a little bit in the garage, and then you have an outbuilding that takes care of the rest of it, you know, you really, really come off as an organized, uh, grounded individual that can really know how to take care of his stuff or her stuff. So if you haven't been able to tell by now, I'm a, uh, I consider myself a fairly organized person. I, I like things in a particular way. I like things in a particular place and have function and purpose behind everything that I have. Now, if you ask Maestro, my wife, uh, she'll tell you that I'm pretty much borderline on OCD freak. Uh, I tend to make sure that everything is cleaned, organized, and she, her favorite saying is, let it go, let it go. So let's just find some middle ground. We'll find some middle ground and that's kind of where I'm at. And that's the only thing I'm trying to impress upon you. Maybe, maybe you're not a, a neat freak. I get it, not everybody is. Not everybody can be like Jack Nicholson and it, as good as it gets. But nonetheless, somewhere along that line, you should have some type of organizational skills where you can keep things neat and you don't become that, uh, that hoarder. And the landscape kind of reflects that. You know, you got parts and pieces, the cars are on the front lawn and you know, we're in the driveway and you throw up the garage door and it looks like this. And there's no way, you know, cars, especially in some of your colder areas, get a chance to get in out of that weather and maybe get plugged in for block heaters and other things because you don't have any place to put them. So this is a great chance leading into the winter and resolutions in January. Maybe it's time that you really think out an outbuilding that you might be able to put in your yard, either on the side yard or the backyard. A great way to start off a new year. So as we probably are aware, you know, large sheds, shops, uh, outbuildings, they're generally made out of aluminum and metal or they're made out of wood and we have seen them at the box stores, we have seen them online on television, and they really, really are easy to locate, easy to source, and get on someone's schedule and have them built and delivered. Here's an idea for you though. In order to save yourself hundreds of dollars off the cost of one of these things, make sure you do your own site work. Make that pad, that whether it's going to be cement pad, a gravel pad, a paver pad, whatever it's going to be, you guys can do that yourself and don't have the company do it because that's going to, that's going to be some dollars for you. It really is. So you know where you want it. Don't go out and start shopping by, for uh, 15 by 20 sheds if you only have room by a 10 by 12 know exactly what your needs are, what you're gonna be using it for, and the amount of space you have to play with. If you're on a small residential lot, maybe you're only gonna have room for 10 by 10, eight by eight, 10 by 12, um, whatever it might be, you should know that before you hit the road, grab a cup of joe and go shopping for these things. Now, for most of you, uh, you're going to have to look into some of your county or city regulations as far as building. Uh, where I came from, if you had an outbuilding that was going to be larger than 120 square feet, you had to pull a permit. Whether it was just mounted on gravel or whatever, it had to be permitted. Now, so check into your guys' legal reg regulations and find out exactly what you need to do. The company that you're buying it from may be the ones that pull the permit, or maybe you as the homeowner have to do it yourself. It's not a hard process. You just have to make a phone call and find out. So before I moved from the small town I was in in Northern California, um, I had a guy come out and build me right on site. He built it from the ground up, a 10 by 14 shed. Yes, that was 140 square feet. Yes, I had to pull a permit. And yes, it was a custom build. I had certain, certain things put into it 
uh, by this guy and it really worked well for the business I had and for some storage from the garage. My garage was an oversized two car garage and it had built in wall panels and, and cabinets and other things that worked really well and you could still get two vehicles in there. It was a little snug, but it was two vehicles. I didn't want to rip out all the built-ins that were there, but the shed cleared the whole floor and it allowed me to, to get those vehicles in, get things secured and get things locked down. And when you had the garage door open, it didn't look like a hoarder's convention. It looked neat and it looked presentable. So site work for sheds are pretty straightforward, depending on your situation. If you're on a slope, you're gonna to have to create some flat. You may have to do a, a block wall or a wooden wall retainer, kind of like this one here. And if you're doing it on flat, you can do it with a cement pad. You can do it with the paver pads. Take a look at some of these pictures as I'm talking to you. This makes it really easy. It's probably for the average 10 by 12 shop, it's probably gonna take you a weekend to carve out and get rid of things that you need to remove and then flatten it out, gravel it, frame it, do whatever you have to do. Whatever you do, make sure it's in a location that's easily accessible. One that you can go from the back door of the garage or the slider of the family room and you can go to it relatively easily. And the things that you put in there are gonna be used relatively frequently. You know, the mower, blower, edger, whatever you might put in there landscape wise, make sure it can roll out and be carried out easily. And you're not having to go through thick gravel or wet lawn or dirt and mud. That's not the place that you want it. Make sure you create pathways and everything that can get there and that they're easy to push and carry and walk on. Finishing off a shed in an existing landscape or planning a new landscape around a shed is limited only by your creativity. You know, you can landscape around these things just like you do your house. You can have foundation beds and perennials. You can have outdoor lighting and small trees for shade. And by the time you complete the project, it's literally like having a little second home back there. You know, I have seen over my 20 plus years, I have seen a lot of creativity that people have brought to these things. The big rage now is to have something 10 by 12 or 12 by 14 or 12 by 20 and you're turning them into she sheds and man caves. You know, you take a look at some of these ideas that I got right here, you know, guys, Nothing like having your own space out there with a pool table, a couple of big screens, a little bit of music here and there, maybe a little fridge. And for you ladies, you are not out of this loop whatsoever. A she shed out there for a place to relax, a place to read, a place to, to get away and decompress, music, hammocks, books, arts and crafts. These are things that you can do with a shed if you have the space and if the rest of the place is all organized and done well. These are great, great additions to the landscape. I love them. As soon as I got my first one, I knew I would never have a house without one. It really makes things work a lot better as far as storage, organization. You can build shelves. You can assemble shelves yourself from somewhere else and put them in the shed and you can organize the walls you can hang tools you can you can put things you can even do up floors and paint it and make it literally feel like a second house i've even seen in some agricultural areas where they have half of the shed being somewhat storage related and the other half being a chicken coop and they have a, a nesting roosting room and everything you know just creativity that's all it is so Think about it, maybe a utility shed is something that you guys can think about, place and use in your landscape. I can't think of anything more to alleviate the clutter, especially if you're trying to clean out that third bedroom because you have another family member, maybe an elderly that's coming in to stay with you and you need to clean things out. What better idea than to put things out in a nice secure shed, it's all locked up nice and dry and out of the weather. Hey, I'm Coach. I can't wait to talk to you next week. Hey, don't forget to check us out over on the Wisdom app. We're going to be there every week now, usually on the weekends, and we'll always try to put a little ad out first before we go live. Great place for you to jump on. You can have a conversation with me about anything landscape related. Anyway, there's always the website. Don't forget the course and the book. I'll catch you guys next week. As always, to your landscape success, you guys take care.